come to the very last lesson in our final unit of our course. And in this lesson we're going to look at what's called the present value of a simple annuity. In the last lesson we looked at what ordinary simple annuities were and what they are are just uh, compound interest questions where you have regular payments that you put into uh, an account. And a simple annuity is where you start with the present value of zero and then you add a regular deposit every compounding period until you get to whatever your future value is going to end up being. Well in today's lesson what we're going to do is we're going to look at examples where you start with the present value but then you're going to make regular withdrawals away from the account before you arrive at a future value of zero. This is called the present value of an annuity and it uses a different formula than what we learned for uh, a regular simple annuity. Here we have Brad and Angelina who are about to retire and they're talking with their investment advisor about a good plan to save money for the future. They figure that they can live off of $1,000 a month for the next 20 years. Yeah, not the way they live, but... Oh, of course, if we're talking about the same brand, Angelina. But whatever. If they invest, their account can earn 9% annual interest compounded monthly. Realistically, that's a lot. So here's question number 1A. How many total withdrawals will they need to make? Well, let's figure this out right away. If they're going to live off $1,000 a month for the next 20 years, well, that's 20 years times 12 times a year. So 20 times 12. Well, 2 times 12 is 24, so 20 times 12 is 240 different withdrawals they'll need to make. If we take this number of withdrawals and multiply it by 1,000, is that the amount they will need in their savings account before the day that they retire? Well, if they're going to take $1,000 out a month, 240 times. So let's take 240 and multiply that by 1,000. Well, that's $240,000 that they're going to be spending over their retirement. Now, is that the amount of money that they need to initially put into their account the day that they retire? And the answer is no. Because uh, even though you're taking out $1,000 every month, remember that the initial amount or the present value that you put into this account that you're going to be making withdrawals fund will be earning interest. So you don't have to put in $240,000 in the account. You need to put in less. And that money will then earn interest into the future and enough interest to be able to pay off a thousand dollars a week or sorry a month for the next 20 years so what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much money they need to invest today so they have enough to pay that thousand dollars 240 times let's first start by creating a timeline to model what the withdrawals look like and here we have it you can see at the top of the timeline we have our compounding periods so if we start with today or now uh, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, all the way to 240 different compounding periods. And each of these periods is a month. So these are all in months. Each compounding period, instead of making a deposit, we're actually now making a withdrawal. So we're going to take $1,000 each compounding period. But what we want to know is, how much is this $1,000 that we're going to need to pay out in the future worth to us today? because that's the amount that I need to save today for each of those $1,000 withdrawals. So just like we made the timeline in the previous lesson, we're going to do the same sort of idea, but now bring the money backwards to today. So this first $1,000 withdrawal one month from now, we're going to bring it back to today. And if we remember our present value formula, it's equal to the future value divided by 1 plus i to the exponent n. So the future value of this withdrawal is 1,000, and I'm dividing it by 1.0075 to the exponent 1. Well, where did we get 0 0.0075? If we remember, the interest rate was 9%. And because we're compounding monthly, we're going to divide that by 12. And this equals 0 0.0075. The withdrawal that we're going to make two months from now, well, 
to find the present value, I'm going to bring that back two total months. So n would equal 2. And so on and so on, all the way until my 240th final withdrawal of $1,000, which will be equal to this. So the present value, or the total amount that I will need in my account, or Brad and Angelina will need in their account, is equal to all of these things added together. So all those things added together creates this, um, I, well, it looks as though it's a series, right? This is a, um, a geometric series, and the common ratio here is 1.0075. So my common ratio for this geometric series here is just 1.0075. And in fact, it's to the negative 1. Because we're dividing it another 1.0075 each time. Now, just like before, I could put this into the geometric series equation. And we would come up with an equation for a simplified equation for this present value annuity. And this is what it ends up looking like. Present value equals R, which is your regular withdrawal in this case, times 1 minus 1 plus I to the negative N, all divided by I. This is very similar to the future value of an annuity, or just a regular annuity. And I'll write out that formula here so we can just notice the differences. We still have that R there, but the one big difference is for the figuring out the future value or any time that we have regular deposits, the 1 plus i portion of the formula comes first and it's to the exponent positive n. Whereas you look at this one, the 1 minus comes first and then it's to the exponent negative n. This is the big and only difference, uh, the order in which those things are written. Each of them has an r that's being multiplied by, each of them is divided by i. So notice that difference. Well, let's plug in all of our numbers into this present value formula and see what we get. So the present value that we'll need equals R, our regular withdrawals, which was 1,000, times 1 minus 1 plus I, so 1.0075, to the exponent negative N, or in this case negative 240 different uh, withdrawals we're going to make. And all this divided by i, which was 0 0.0075. Let's bring out our calculator and figure out what this is. Well, we're going to start with the square bracket portion here. So I'm going to say 1 minus, and then in brackets, 1.0075 to the exponent negative 240. And so this is going to give us this decimal number. Now I'm going to multiply this by a thousand. And then divide by our interest rate, 0 0.0075. And we end up with 111,144 and 95 cents. And there it is. So Brad and Angelina only have to put in away $111,000 right now so that they can afford to pay out $240,000 worth of withdrawals over the next 20 years. That's a uh, pretty good savings. That's less than half of the amount of money they're going to be paying out. Um, so just know that when you retire, this is the same idea exists here. You're going to get a chunk of retirement money when you retire, and you're going to be giving yourself a bunch of money every month. And the amount of money you start with, remember that can get uh, earn interest over time, and you'll be able to actually take out a lot more money than what you initially have there as your present value. Alright, we'll look at one more example. Alright, example two. JZ's career takes a dive and his life savings total only $300,000 when he decides to retire. He invests it in an annuity that will pay him quarterly for the next 30 years. If his account earns 5.2% annual interest compounded quarterly, we need to figure out how much can JZ withdraw each quarter? 
and how much interest will he have made over the entire investment. All right, so JZ, who is the Canadian version of JZ, uh, is withdrawing every quarter, which is slightly different than every month, which we've seen before. So let's figure out his interest rate that he's working with first. So remember, we have I equals, and then we're going to take the 5.2%, which is 0 0.052, and divide that by 4. And this is going to equal 0 0.013. I just did that in my head. 52 and half is 26, 26 and half is 13. All right, so we'll get our present value formula here. Present value equals R times 1 minus 1 plus I to the exponent negative N, and then everything divided by I. It says that he has saved up 300,000, so that's our present value. So we'll write that here. The regular withdrawals is what we're trying to find, so that's the R. And my I we know is 0 0.013, so this is going to be 1 minus 1.013. Now what's our N value? Well, if he's being paid quarterly for 30 years, N is going to equal 30 years times 4 times a year, so that's 120 total times. So my n here is negative 120. And then we'll take this and divide it by i, which is just 0 0.013. So how do we solve for r now? Well, we try to take everything away from r and move it to the other side. So as you can see, I'm going to take this 0 0.013, which is currently dividing the r, and I'm going to multiply it to the other side. And then I'm going to take this 1 minus 1.013 to the exponent negative 120. And because it's now multiplying with the r, I'm going to divide it on the other side. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this. r is going to equal this 300,000 multiplied by this 0 0.013, but then divided by this 1 minus 1.013 to the exponent negative 120. And let's get our calculator out and see what this equals. So we can plug everything in in once here. So we'll start with 300,000, multiply that by 0 and then we're going to divide that whole thing, and we'll put this in brackets, 1 minus 1.013 to the exponent negative 120. And we'll close the bracket. And what do we end up with here? 4950. At first, this seems like a ton of money because we just talked about Brad and Angelina only taking in $1,000 a month. But remember, this is quarterly, so this is for three months total. So approximately $5,000 over three months, what's that? That's about uh, $1,600, $1,700 a month. Uh, now, that's, that's not too bad. But $4,950.87 is what JZ will be able to take out of his account every three months, starting with $300,000. So now let's figure out how much interest he'll have made over the amount of time, knowing that he'll be able to take out this almost $5,000 120 times. So let's take this 49587 and we'll multiply that by 120 to see the total amount of money he takes out of the account. So 4950.87 each time multiplied by 120 times gives me $594,104.40. Remember, he only invested 300000 into the account. So how much of that is interest? Well, we'll just take away this a number. Uh, we'll take away 300000 from this number. And we end up with $294,104.40 in interest, which is almost double the amount 
uh, that he started with. So he almost doubles his account, half interest, half his present value. And voila, that is the present value of simple annuities. Well, that just about does it for the finance unit in this course, which happens to also be the last unit in this course. I thank you for taking the time to watch these lessons online, and good luck to you in not only your exam that you're going to write for this course, but any future math courses. Thank you, and hopefully we'll see you later.